Article 2. Unlawful Acts and Penalties. Section 4. Importation of Dangerous Drugs and or Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals. The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall import or bring into the Philippines any dangerous drug, regardless of the quantity and purity involved, including any and all species of opium poppy, or any part thereof or substances derived therefrom, even for floral, decorative, and culinary purposes. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and 1 day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall import any controlled precursor and essential chemical. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized under the Act, shall import or bring into the Philippines any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical through the use of a diplomatic passport, diplomatic facilities, or any other means involving his or her official status intended to facilitate the unlawful entry of the same. In addition, the diplomatic passport shall be confiscated and cancelled. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who organizes, manages, or acts as a financier of any of the illegal activities prescribed in this section. The penalty of 12 years and 1 day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who acts as a protector, cuddler, of any violator of the provisions under this section. Section 5. Sale, Trading, Administration, Dispensation, Delivery, Distribution, and Transportation of Dangerous Drugs and or Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals. The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall sell, trade, administer, dispense, deliver, give away to another, distribute, dispatch, in transit, or transport any dangerous drug, including any and all species of opium poppy, regardless of the quantity and purity involved, or shall act as a broker in any of such transactions. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and 1 day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall sell, trade, administer, dispense, deliver, give away to another, distribute, dispatch in transit, or transport any controlled precursor and essential chemical, or shall act as a broker in such transactions. If the sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution, or transportation of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor an essential chemical transpires within 100 meters from the school, the maximum penalty shall be imposed in every case. For drug pushers who use minors or mentally incapacitated individuals as runners, couriers, and messengers, or in any other capacity directly connected to the dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals trade, the maximum penalty shall be imposed in every case. If the victim of the offense is a minor or mentally incapacitated individual, or should a dangerous drug and or controlled precursor, an essential chemical involved in any offense herein provided be the proximate cause of death of a victim thereof, the maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed. 
the maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who organizes, manages, or acts as a financier of any of the illegal activities prescribed in this section. The penalty of 12 years and one day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who acts as a protector, cuddler of any violator of the provisions under this section. Section 6. Maintenance of a den, dive, or resort. The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person or group of persons who shall maintain a den, dive, or resort where any dangerous drug is used or sold in any form. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years in one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person or group of persons who shall maintain a den, dive, or resort where any controlled precursor and essential chemical is used or sold in any form. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed in every case where any dangerous drug is administered, delivered, or sold to a minor who is allowed to use the same in such a place. Should any dangerous drug be the proximate cause of the death of a person using the same in such den, dive, or resort, the penalty of death and a fine ranging from 1 million to 15 million pesos shall be imposed on the maintainer, owner, and or operator. If such den, dive, or resort is owned by a third person, the same shall be confiscated and is cheated in favor of the government, provided that the criminal complaint shall specifically allege that such place is intentionally used in the furtherance of the crime, provided, further, that the prosecution shall prove such intent on the part of the owner to use the property for such purpose, provided, finally, that the owner shall be included as an accused in the criminal complaint. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who organizes, manages, or acts as a financier of any of the illegal activities prescribed in this section. The penalty of 12 years and one day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who acts as a protector, cuddler of any violator of the provisions under this section. Section 7. Employees and Visitors of a Den, Dive, or Resort the penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon a. Any employee of den, dive, or resort who is aware of the nature of the place as such and b. Any person who, not being included in the provisions of the next preceding paragraph, is aware of the nature of the place as such and shall knowingly visit the same. Section 8. Manufacture of Dangerous Drugs and or Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall engage in the manufacture of any dangerous drug. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall manufacture any controlled precursor and essential chemical. The presence of any controlled precursor and essential chemical or laboratory equipment in the clandestine laboratory is a prima facie proof of manufacture of any dangerous drug 
it shall be considered an aggravating circumstance if the clandestine laboratory is undertaken or established under the following circumstances. A. Any phase of the manufacturing process was conducted in the presence or with the help of minors. B. Any phase or manufacturing process was established or undertaken within 100 meters of residential, business, church, or school premises. C. Any clandestine laboratory was secured or protected with booby traps. D. Any clandestine laboratory was concealed with legitimate business operations. Or E. Any employment of a practitioner, chemical engineer, public official, or foreigner. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who organizes, manages, or acts as a financier of any of the illegal activities prescribed in this section. The penalty of 12 years and one day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who acts as a protector, cuddler of any violator of the provisions under this section. Section 9. Illegal Chemical Diversion of Controlled Precursors and Essential Chemicals the penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall illegally divert any controlled precursor in essential chemical. Section 10. Manufacture or Delivery of Equipment instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who shall deliver, possess with intent to deliver, or manufacture would intend to deliver equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs, knowing or under circumstances where one reasonably should know that it will be used to plant, propagate, cultivate, grow, harvest, manufacture, compound, convert, produce, process, prepare, test, analyze, pack, repack, store contain or conceal any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical in violation of the Act. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from six months and one day to four years and a fine ranging from 10,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos shall be imposed if it will be used to inject, ingest, inhale, or otherwise introduced into the human body a dangerous drug in violation of the Act. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who uses a minor or a mentally incapacitated individual to deliver such equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs. Section 11. Possession of Dangerous Drugs the penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall possess any dangerous drug in the following quantities regardless of the degree of purity thereof. A. 10 grams or more of opium. B. 10 grams or more of morphine. C. 10 grams or more of heroin. D. 10 grams or more of cocaine or cocaine hydrochloride. E. 50 grams or more of methamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu. F. 10 grams or more of marijuana resin or marijuana resin oil. G. 500 grams or more of marijuana. And H. 10 grams or more of other dangerous drugs such as but not limited to methylene dioxymethamphetamine, MDMA, or ecstasy, paramethoxyamphetamine, PMA, trimethoxyamphetamine, T, 
TMA, lysergic acid diethylamin, LSD, gamma hydroxybutyrate, GHB, and those similarly designed or newly introduced drugs and their derivatives without having any therapeutic value, or if the quantity possessed is far beyond therapeutic requirements, as determined and promulgated by the Board in accordance with Section 93, Article 11 of the Act. Otherwise, if the quantity involved is less than the foregoing quantities, the penalties shall be graduated as follows. 1. Life imprisonment and a fine ranging from 400,000 paces to 500,000 paces if the quantity of methamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu is 10 grams or more but less than 50 grams. 2. Imprisonment of 20 years and one day to life imprisonment and a fine ranging from 400,000 paces to 500,000 paces if the quantities of dangerous drugs are 5 grams or more but less than 10 grams of opium, morphine, heroin, cocaine or cocaine hydrochloride, marijuana resin or marijuana resin oil, methamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu or other dangerous drugs such as but not limited to MDMA or ecstasy, PMA, TMA, LSD, GHB, and those similarly designed or newly introduced drugs and their derivatives without having any therapeutic value, or if the quantity possessed is far beyond therapeutic requirements, or 300 grams or more but less than 500 grams of marijuana. And 3. Imprisonment of 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 300,000 paces to 400,000 paces if the quantities of the dangerous drugs are less than 5 grams of opium, morphine, heroin, cocaine or cocaine hydrochloride, marijuana resin or marijuana resin oil, methamphetamine hydrochloride or shabu, or other dangerous drugs such as, but not limited to, MDMA or ecstasy, PMA, TMA, LSD, GHB, and those similarly designed or newly introduced drugs and their derivatives without having any therapeutic value, or if the quantity possessed is far beyond therapeutic requirements or less than 300 grams of marijuana. Section 12. Possession of Equipment, Instrument, Apparatus, and Other Paraphernalia for Dangerous Drugs the penalty of imprisonment ranging from six months and one day to four years and a fine ranging from 10,000 paces to 50,000 paces shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall possess or have under his or her control any equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia fit or intended for smoking, consuming, administering, injecting, ingesting, or introducing any dangerous drug into the body, provided that in the case of medical practitioners and various professionals who are required to carry such equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia in the practice of their profession, the board shall prescribe the necessary implementing guidelines thereof. The possession of such equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia fit or intended for any of the purposes enumerated in the preceding paragraph shall be prima facie evidence that the possessor has smoked, consumed, administered to himself, herself, injected, ingested, or used a dangerous drug and shall be presumed to have violated Section 15 of the Act. Section 13 possession of dangerous drugs during parties, social gatherings, or meetings. Any person found possessing any dangerous drug during a party or at a social gathering or meeting or in the proximate company of at least two persons shall suffer the maximum penalties provided for in Section 11 of the Act, regardless of the quantity and purity of such dangerous drugs. The phrase, Company of at least two persons shall mean the accused or suspect plus at least two others who may or may not be in possession of any dangerous drug. 
Section 14. Possession of equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs during parties, social gatherings, or meetings. The maximum penalty provided for in Section 12 of the Act shall be imposed upon any person who shall possess or have under his, her, control any equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia fit or intended for smoking, consuming, administering, injecting, ingesting, or introducing any dangerous drug into the body during parties, social gatherings or meetings, or in the proximate company of at least two persons. The phrase company of at least two persons shall mean the accused or suspect plus at least two others who may or may not be in possession of any equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs. Section 15. Use of Dangerous Drugs a person apprehended or arrested who was found to be positive for use of any dangerous drug after a confirmatory test shall be imposed a penalty of a minimum of six months rehabilitation in a government center for the first offense, subject to the provision of the Article 8 of the Act. If apprehended using any dangerous drug for the second time, he, she, shall suffer the penalty of imprisonment ranging from six years and one day to twelve years, and a fine ranging from 50,000 paces to 200,000 paces, provided that this section shall not be applicable where the person tested is also found to have in his her possession such quantity of any dangerous drug provided for under Section 11 of the Act, in which case the provisions stated therein shall apply. Section 16. Cultivation or culture of plants classified as dangerous drugs or our sources thereof. The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who shall plant, cultivate, or culture marijuana, opium poppy, or any other plant regardless of quantity, which is or may hereafter be classified as a dangerous drug or as a source from which any dangerous drug may be manufactured or derived provided that in the case of medical laboratories and medical research centers which cultivate or culture marijuana, opium poppy, and other plants or materials of such dangerous drugs for medical experiments and research purposes or for those creation of new types of medicine, the board shall prescribe the necessary implementing guidelines for the proper cultivation, culture, handling, experimentation, and disposal of such plants and materials. The land or portions thereof and or greenhouses on which any of said plant is cultivated or cultured shall be confiscated and is cheated in favor of the estate, unless the owner thereof can prove lack of knowledge of such cultivation or culture despite the exercise of due diligence on his her part. If the land involved is part of the public domain, the maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon the offender. The maximum penalty provided for under this section shall be imposed upon any person who organizes, manages, or acts as a financier of any of the illegal activities prescribed in this section. The penalty of 12 years and one day to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine ranging from 100,000 paces to 500,000 paces shall be imposed upon any person who acts as a protector, cuddler of any violator of the provisions under this section. Section 17. Maintenance and keeping of original records of transactions on dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. 
the penalty of imprisonment ranging from one year and one day to six years and a fine ranging from 10,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any practitioner, manufacturer, wholesaler, importer, distributor, dealer, or retailer who violates or fails to comply with the maintenance and keeping of the original records of transactions on any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical in accordance with Section 40 of the Act. An additional penalty shall be imposed through the revocation of the license to practice his her profession in case of a practitioner or of the business in case of a manufacturer, seller, importer, distributor, dealer, or retailer. Section 18. Unnecessary Prescription of Dangerous Drugs the penalty of imprisonment ranging from 12 years and one day to 20 years and a fine ranging from 100,000 pesos to 500,000 pesos and the additional penalty of the revocation of his her license to practice shall be imposed upon the practitioner who shall prescribe any dangerous drug to any person whose physical or physiological condition does not require its use or in the dosage prescribed therein, as determined by the board in consultation with recognized competent experts who are authorized representatives of professional organizations of practitioners, particularly those who are involved in the care of persons with severe pain. Section 19. Unlawful Prescription of Dangerous Drugs The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, unless authorized by law, shall make or issue a prescription or any other writing purporting to be a prescription for any dangerous drug. Section 20 confiscation and for feature of the proceeds or instruments of the unlawful act, including the properties or proceeds derived from the illegal trafficking of dangerous drugs and or precursors and essential chemicals. Every penalty imposed for the unlawful importation, sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution, transportation, or manufacture of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical, the cultivation or culture of plants which are sources of dangerous drugs, and the possession of any equipment, instrument, apparatus, and other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs, including other laboratory equipment, shall carry with it the confiscation and for feature in favor of the government of all the proceeds and properties derived derived from the unlawful act, including, but not limited, to money and other assets obtained thereby, and the instruments or tools with which the particular unlawful act was committed, unless they are the property of a third person not liable for the unlawful act, but those which are not of lawful commerce shall be ordered destroyed without delay, pursuant to the provisions of Section 21 of the Act." After conviction in the regional trial court and the appropriate criminal case filed, the court shall immediately schedule a hearing for the confiscation and for feature of all the proceeds of the offense and all the assets and properties of the accused either owned or held by him or in the name of some other persons, if the same shall be found to be manifestly out of proportion to his her lawful income." Provided, however, that if the forfeited property is a vehicle, the same shall be auctioned off not later than five days upon order of confiscation or forfeiture. During dependency of the case in the regional trial court, no property or income derived therefrom, which may be confiscated and forfeited, shall be disposed, alienated, or transferred, and the same shall be in custodia legis, and no bond shall be admitted for the release of the same.
the proceeds of any sale or disposition of any property confiscated or forfeited under this section shall be used to pay all proper expenses incurred in the proceedings for the confiscation, forfeiture, custody, and maintenance of the property pending disposition, as well as expenses for publication and court cost. The proceeds in excess of the above expenses shall accrue to the board to be used in its campaign against illegal drugs. Section 21. Custody and disposition of confiscated, seized, and or surrendered dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors, and essential chemicals, instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment. The PIDEA, PDEA shall take charge and have custody of all dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors, and essential chemicals, as well as instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment so confiscated, seized, and or surrendered for proper disposition in the following manner. A. The apprehending officer, team, having initial custody and control of the drugs shall immediately after seizure and confiscation, physically inventory and photograph the same in the presence of the accused or the persons from whom such items were confiscated and or seized, or his her representative or counsel, a representative from the media and the Department of Justice, and any elected public official who shall be required to sign the copies of the inventory and be given a copy thereof, provided that the physical inventory and photograph shall be conducted at the place where the search warrant is served or at the nearest police station or at the nearest office of the apprehending officer or team, whichever is practicable, in case of warrantless seizures, provided further that non-compliance with these requirements under justifiable grounds as long as the integrity and the evidentiary value of the seized items are properly preserved by the apprehending officer, team, shall not render void and invalid such seizures of and custody over said items. b. Within 24 hours upon confiscation or seizure of dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors and essential chemicals, as well as instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment, the same shall be submitted to the PIDEA Forensic Laboratory for a qualitative and quantitative examination. C. A certification of the forensic laboratory examination results, which shall be done under oath by the forensic laboratory examiner, shall be issued within 24 hours after the receipt of the subject items, provided that when the volume of the dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, and controlled precursors and essential chemicals does not allow the completion of testing within the time frame. A partial laboratory examination report shall be provisionally issued stating therein the quantities of dangerous drugs still to be examined by the forensic laboratory, provided, however, that a final certification shall be issued on the completed forensic laboratory examination on the same within the next 24 hours. D. After the filing of the criminal case, the court, within 72 hours, conduct an ocular inspection of the confiscated, seized, and or surrendered dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, and controlled precursors and essential chemicals, including the instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment, and through the PDEA, PIDEA, shall, within 24 hours thereafter, proceed with the destruction or burning of the same in the presence of the accused or the persons from whom such items were confiscated and or seized, or his, her representative or counsel, a representative from the media and the DOJ, civil society groups, and any elected public official. The board shall draw up the guidelines on the manner of proper disposition and destruction of such items, which shall be borne by the offender, provided that those item, items of lawful commerce, as determined by the board, shall be donated, used, or recycled for legitimate purposes, 
provided further that a representative sample duly weighed and recorded is retained. E. The Board shall then issue a sworn certification as to the fact of destruction or burning of the subject item items which, together with the representative sample samples in the custody of the PIDEA, shall be submitted to the court having jurisdiction over the case. In cases of seizures where no person is apprehended and no criminal case is filed, the PDEA, PIDEA, may order the immediate destruction or burning of seized dangerous drugs and controlled precursors and essential chemicals under guidelines set by the board. In all instances, the representative samples shall be kept to a minimum quantity as determined by the board. F. The alleged offender or his, her representative or counsel shall be allowed to personally observe all of the above proceedings and his, her presence shall not constitute an admission of guilt. In case the said offender or accused refuses or fails to appoint a representative after due notice in writing to the accused or his her counsel within 72 hours before the actual burning or destruction of the evidence in question, the Secretary of Justice shall appoint a member of the public attorney's office to represent the former. G. After the promulgation and judgment in the criminal case wherein the representative samples was presented as evidence in court, the trial prosecutor shall inform the board of the final termination of the case and, in turn, shall request the court for leave to turn over the said representative sample samples to the PDEA, PIDEA, for proper disposition and destruction within 24 hours from receipt of the same. An H. Transitory Provision Subsection H1 Within 24 hours from the effectivity of the act, dangerous drugs defined herein, which are presently in possession of law enforcement agencies, shall, with leave of court, be burned or destroyed in the presence of representatives of the court, DOJ, Department of Health, DOH, and the accused and or his, her counsel. N. Subsection H. 2. Pending the organization of the PDEA, PIDEA, the custody, disposition, and burning or destruction of seized, surrendered, dangerous drugs provided under this section shall be implemented by the DOH. In the meantime that the PIDEA has no forensic laboratories and or evidence rooms, as well as the necessary personnel of its own in any area of its jurisdiction, the existing National Bureau of Investigation, NBI, and Philippine National Police, PNP, forensic laboratories shall continue to examine or conduct screening and confirmatory tests on the seized, surrendered evidence, whether this be dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors and essential chemicals, instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment. And the NBI and the PNP shall continue to have custody of such evidence for use in court and until disposed of, burned or destroyed in accordance with the foregoing rules. Provided that pending appointment, designation of the full complement of the representatives from the media, DOJ, or elected public official, the inventory of the said evidence shall continue to be conducted by the arresting NBI and PNP operatives under their existing procedures, unless otherwise directed in writing by the DOH or PDEA, PDEA, as the case may be. Section 22. Grant of Compensation, Reward, and Award. Compensation, Reward, and Award shall upon the recommendation of the Board be granted to any person providing information and to law enforcers participating in the operation, which results in the successful confiscation, seizure, or surrender of dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, and controlled precursors and essential chemicals, subject to the compensation, reward, and award system promulgated by the Board. Section 23. Plea Bargaining Provision 
any person charged under any provision of the Act, regardless of the imposable penalty, shall not be allowed to avail of the provision on plea bargaining. Section 24. Non-applicability of the probation law for drug traffickers and pushers. Any person convicted of drug trafficking or pushing under the Act, regardless of the penalty imposed by the court, cannot avail of the privilege granted by the probation law or Presidential Decree No. 968 as amended. Section 25. Qualifying aggravating circumstances in the commission of a crime by an offender under the influence of dangerous drugs, notwithstanding the provisions of any law to the contrary, a positive finding for the use of dangerous drugs shall be a qualifying aggravating circumstance in the commission of a crime by an offender and the application of the penalty provided for in the revised penal code shall be applicable. Positive finding refers to the result of confirmatory test. Section 26. Attempt or Conspiracy Any attempt or conspiracy to commit the following unlawful acts shall be penalized by the same penalty prescribed for the commission of the same provided under the Act. A. Importation of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical. B. Sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution, and transportation of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical. C. Maintenance of a den, dive, or resort where any dangerous drug is used in any form. D. Manufacture of any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical. And E. Cultivation or culture of plants which are sources of dangerous drugs. Section 27. Criminal liability of a public officer or employee for misappropriation, misapplication, or failure to account for the confiscated, seized, and or surrendered dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors, and essential chemicals, Instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment, including the proceeds or properties obtained from the unlawful act committed. The penalty of life imprisonment to death and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos, in addition to absolute perpetual disqualification from any public office, shall be imposed upon any public officer or employee who misappropriates, misapplies, or fails to account for confiscated, seized, or surrendered dangerous drugs, plant sources of dangerous drugs, controlled precursors and essential chemicals, instruments, paraphernalia, and or laboratory equipment including the proceeds or properties obtained from the unlawful acts as provided for in the Act. Any elective local or national official found to have benefited from the proceeds of the trafficking of dangerous drugs as prescribed in the Act or have received any financial or material contributions or donations from natural or juridical persons found guilty of trafficking dangerous drugs as prescribed in the Act shall be removed from office and perpetually disqualified from holding any relative or appointed positions in the government, its divisions, subdivisions, and intermediaries including government-owned or controlled corporations. Section 28. Criminal Liability of Government Officials and Employees The maximum penalties of the unlawful acts provided for in the Act shall be imposed, in addition to absolute perpetual disqualification from any public office, if those found guilty of such unlawful acts are government officials and employees. Section 29. Criminal liability for planting of evidence. Any person who is found guilty of planting any dangerous drug and or controlled precursor and essential chemical, regardless of quantity and purity, shall suffer the penalty of death. Section 30. Criminal liability of officers of partnerships, corporations, associations, or other juridical entities. 
in case any violation of the act is committed by a partnership, corporation, association, or any juridical entity, the partner, president, director, manager, trustee, estate administrator, or officer who consents to or knowingly tolerates such violation shall be held criminally liable as a co-principal. The penalty provided for the offense under the act shall be imposed upon the partner, president, director, manager, trustee, estate administrator, or officer who knowingly authorizes, tolerates, or consents to the use of a vehicle, vessel, aircraft, equipment, or other facility as an instrument in the importation, sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution, transportation, or manufacture of dangerous drugs or chemical diversion if such vehicle, vessel, aircraft, equipment, or other instrument is owned by or under the control or supervision of the partnership, corporation, association, or juridical entity to which they are affiliated. Section 31. Additional Penalty if Offender is an Alien in addition to the penalties prescribed in the unlawful act committed, any alien who violates such provisions of the act shall, after service of sentence, be deported immediately without further proceedings, unless the penalty is death. Section 32. Liability of a person violating any regulation issued by the board. The penalty of imprisonment ranging from six months and one day to four years and a fine ranging from 10,000 paces to 50,000 paces shall be imposed upon any person found violating any regulation duly issued by the board pursuant to the Act in addition to the administrative sanctions imposed by the board. Section 33. Immunity from Prosecution and Punishment Notwithstanding the provisions of Section 17, Rule 119 of the Revised Rules of Criminal Procedure and the provisions of Republic Act No. 6981 or the Witness Protection, Security and Benefit Act of 1991, any person who has violated Sections 7, 11, 12, 14, 15, and 19, Article 2 of the Act, who voluntarily gives information about any violation of Sections 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 13, and 16, Article 2 of the Act, as well as any commission of the offenses mentioned if committed by a drug syndicate, or any information leading to the whereabouts, identities, and arrest of all or any of the members thereof, and who willingly testifies against such person as described above, shall be exempted from prosecution or punishment for the offense with reference to which his her information and testimony were given, and may plead or prove the giving of such information and testimony in bar of such prosecution provided that the following conditions concur. A. The information and testimony are necessary for the conviction of the persons described above. B. Such information and testimony are not yet in the possession of the state. C. Such information and testimony can be corroborated on its material points. D. The informant or witness has not been previously convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude except when there is no other direct evidence available for the state other than the information and testimony of said informant or witness. And e. The informant or witness shall strictly and faithfully comply without delay any condition or undertaking reduced into writing lawfully imposed by the state as further consideration for the grant of immunity from prosecution and punishment, provided, further, that this immunity may be enjoyed by such informant or witness who does not appear to be most guilty for the offense with reference to which his, her information or testimony were given, provided, finally, 
that there is no direct evidence available for the state except for the information and testimony of the said informant or witness. Section 34. Termination of the Grant of Immunity the immunity granted to the informant or witness, as prescribed in Section 33 of the Act, shall not attach should it turn out subsequently that the information and or testimony is false, malicious, or made only for the purpose of harassing, molesting, or in any way prejudicing the persons described in the preceding section against whom such information or testimony is directed. In such case, the informant or witness shall be subject to prosecution and the enjoyment of all rights and benefits previously accorded him under the Act or any other law, decree, or order shall be deemed terminated. In case an informant or witness under the Act fails or refuses to testify without just cause, and when lawfully obliged to do so, or should he, she, violate any condition accompanying such immunity as provided above, his, her immunity shall be removed and he, she, shall likewise be subject to contempt and or criminal prosecution, as the case may be and the enjoyment of all rights and benefits previously accorded him under the Act or in any other law, decree, or order shall be deemed terminated. In case the informant or witness referred to under the Act falls under the applicability of this section hereof, such individual cannot avail of the provisions under Article 8 of the Act. Section 35. Accessory Penalties a person convicted under the Act shall be disqualified to exercise his, her civil rights such as, but not limited to, the rights of parental authority or guardianship, either as to the person or property of any ward, the rights to dispose of such property by any Act or any conveyance inter vivos, and political rights such as, but not limited to, the right to vote and be voted for. Such rights shall also be suspended during dependency of an appeal from such conviction. We hope you have enjoyed listening. More audiobooks are coming your way. Please support by clicking the subscribe button and bell icon to receive notifications of our latest upload. A like and share is appreciated. Audio and performance copyright by Rock Audio. All rights reserved.